Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is V and this is Critical Healing Moment, a channel that's usually about healing, social work, social justice, social movements, things like that. And today's video is the first one in this new series I'm calling the Joyful Growing Series. It may seem kind of random, but for me, learning how to grow food in a garden has been such a part of my healing process, so I'm going to make a whole series of videos dedicated to it. I started gardening like three years ago on a little balcony, just like growing things from food scraps. And then I moved to a bigger place with a yard and I tried to do in-ground gardening for two years, which was mildly successful. Well, I made progress. I made progress. And this year I am in a new place and I have a patio that's right here. You can't see it because the lighting is all blown out. Um, but my little seedlings are out there right now, but you're not going to see them in this video. In this video, I'm just going to show you how I'm starting my garden from seed and just the progress during the early stages. The first round of seeds I started with were bell peppers, bib lettuce, mescaline mix, tatsoi mustard, currant tomatoes, eggplant, mizuna mustard, roma tomatoes, and an unlabeled mystery Asian vegetable. I first started out by making some very rough plans in my bullet journal, laying out how many of each plant and where I'm going to put them in the seed starting tray. I will be making a future video about how I use my bullet journal for gardening in this very haphazard way. For me, it's not a very super planned process, but anyways, I use my bullet journal to just take notes of where I'm planting each seed instead of labeling them with stickers or those little things that you put into the dirt. In my research of seed starting, the easiest way seemed to be with Jiffy Pods. So I grabbed two of these Jiffy Pod trays from Home Depot for around $3 each. These are compressed peat moss pellets, which expand when they're rehydrated with water. Now, just watch these guys expand. The pods are wrapped in a biodegradable netting. So once your seedlings actually start to grow, you can just transplant them directly into the ground or the permanent container right in the pods themselves. Although some people recommend that you remove them completely or just cut slits in them so that the roots aren't constrained. But I'm getting ahead of myself because transplanting is for another video. All I'm doing here is putting a couple seeds in and lightly covering them with the peat moss. I don't worry too much about the depth and just try to avoid burying them too deep. And lastly, this is the mystery Asian vegetable. I do know what this plant is now, but I'm not going to tell you. So you're going to have to subscribe and watch the next video to find out what this is. Once I was done planting my seeds in the Jiffy Pod tray, I covered up the seeds with the plastic greenhouse covering, which is there to create this greenhouse effect and retain the moisture. And I left it on my gardening shelf, which is right behind me, right here. It's a mess. Don't worry about it. So the company that makes these recommends that you use a heat mat, but I didn't want to buy one after looking into how much they cost. So my solution to that was two things. So I use a space heater to keep the area of the room warm. I just pointed the space heater at the plants. I don't know if that's a good idea or not. And the other thing that I did was I would take them outside when I went to work when it was warm enough for them to be outside like around 60 degrees so that they could get that natural warmth. But I didn't leave them there overnight. I brought them in when I got home so that they're safe and sound and in a nice warm place at night. So although the Jiffy Pods are very convenient and they are accessible and affordable, I learned later that harvesting peat moss is harmful to the environment since peat moss takes years and years to grow. So I started my future seeds in coconut core instead. So coconut core is basically the stuff that's outside of a mature coconut, like that brown fuzzy stuff. And it's usually a food waste product because you can't eat it, but there are a lot of agricultural 
uses for coconut core that actually stem back to a lot of indigenous cultures that have climates where coconuts grow. So coconut core is really great at retaining moisture. So that's what makes it really great as something to use for growing plants. So you can buy it at Home Depot. That's where I bought mine for around $3. And it comes in this little block. It actually looks, this is a yoga block that I use to lift up my plants for their grow lights. But it looks pretty much like this. It's like this size and it's $3. And what you do is you just put it into a bucket, you add water and this little block expands to like eight quarts of product. So I don't have any more right now, so I can't really show you. Although there is coconut core in this, for example. This is coconut core and it's growing some bib lettuce in it right now. But what you can do is just create your own little pods of coconut core. So how I started my seed starting pods was first by collecting a bunch of trash, which is why there's a bunch of trash behind me. So I collected things like food containers, egg cartons, paper towel and toilet rolls. And these are gonna be the container for the little seedlings to start growing in. So for the um, toilet paper and paper towel rolls, I'm gonna do a little demo right now. What you're gonna do to make them is you're gonna cut them to like two inches. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna make four slits that are about one inch each, like halfway up. So one here. So you're gonna like flatten it and do it on like top and bottom. And then you're going to fold it the other way so that the slits are in the middle. And then you're going to cut two more. And then what you're gonna do, and this might be a little bit tricky, is you're going to fold them so that there's like one corner that overlaps. So just fold them all like clockwise. And then for the last one, you're going to have to tuck this one underneath. I don't even, can you see that? I don't even know if you can see that. And then you're just gonna flatten it out and it makes a little box. And this is cardboard, so it's biodegradable. It's harmless to the environment. So then you're just gonna fill this up with coconut core, plant your seeds in, make sure that they're warm and they have enough water and you're good to go. You can even use these in the trays, like the Jiffy Pod trays that the Jiffy Pod company makes, or you can use something like a takeout container and then line them all up like this so that, and then you, you have a lid, you have, you don't need to spend money. I didn't initially film the process of me making those and filling them up with coconut core. So you're just gonna have to have this old, badly lit footage. So these are my beet seedlings that I'm growing in the coconut core toilet paper tube seed starting pods. And this is mescaline mix, which I planted in coconut core just in an old hummus container. And these are the rest of my seedlings. So now you see here my original round of seedlings, which I showed you earlier in the video with two weeks progress of growing. You know, some of them didn't germinate and spoiler alert, some of them never germinated. But after most of them germinated, I noticed that they were looking a little bit leggy. And remember I was still like taking them outside so that they can get that sunlight when it was warm enough. So I thought that would be enough to keep them going, but because there were some days where it was a little bit cold, I didn't bring them out, or if it was raining, I didn't bring them out. And I think they just needed a lot more intensity with everything because when you have a heat mat and when you have the grow lights, then it's just very, very intense, just mimicking the temperature of the soil outside when it's warmer and also the intensity of the sunlight. So anyways, they were looking a little bit leggy. So I thought that I should invest in some grow lights. So I made this DIY grow light setup for around $45 from Home Depot. And like I live basically across the street from Home Depot. So I'm at Home Depot all the time. You only need two things. You need a clamp light and you need an LED light, which I'll get into more specifics of. So the clamp light, which you can obviously buy one like 
This one, however, I also have a light that's kind of like from college, like the ones you buy at Target, which can clamp onto things onto a shelf. That might even work. And I'm also thinking if you have a floor lamp that has those bendable arms, you could just put one of the light bulbs and bend the arm downward. So you might not even have to buy anything. And then you're gonna need an LED light with specific specifications. These specifications mimic the features of natural sunlight. So it's really important that you get the right kind of LED lights. You can't just use any old light bulb you have. So these ones specifically, which are on right now here, are 2000 lumens, which measures the intensity of the brightness of the light, and 5000 K or Kelvins, which measures the color temperature of the light. So how cool or warm the light is, like the bluish versus the orangish light. You know, as I was researching this, I was trying to remember like, did I learn this in high school physics class? It all sounds somewhat familiar. So it's helpful if you have a shelf like this where you can clamp the light onto one of the, the sides or the top shelf so that you can direct the light onto the plants. But you could always figure out a different way to do it. I know that there are tutorials out there to make things with like PVC pipe or you could just find another piece of furniture to clamp it on. Just be innovative. There's no wrong or right way to do it. Well, maybe there is a wrong way that kills your plants. So ideally the light bulb is just a few inches away from the seedlings. Having multiple sizes of containers made this difficult and just having one light instead of one of those fluorescent tube lights was difficult. So they weren't getting an even direction, but what I did was I would rotate the seedlings closer to the light on different days so that they could get a turn. So I just want to make a quick note here that I'm basically freestyling. The way that I approach things with my garden and with most things in life is to just learn as much as practical because I could go in and try to become an expert in gardening and just like spend all of my time with my nose in a gardening book. But my perspective is just learn as much as what's practical for you and then just start doing it. So I start doing it and then I learn a little bit more and then I realize more things and I'm kind of doing things backwards sometimes, but you know what? It's working out fine. What I've learned recently is that coconut core and peat moss do not have any nutrients in it. So you're going to have to fertilize your plants that you start in coconut core or peat moss or transplant them into a nutrient rich soil as soon as they start developing their true leaves. So I wasn't ready to transplant them. So I made my own liquid fertilizer. So you're gonna wanna use a liquid and not a granular since granular fertilizer releases over a much longer term process. But if you dissolve your granular fertilizer in water and there's ratios that you can find on the internet and it really depends on what your fertilizer is and the MPK ratio, which is way too much for me to understand myself and explain to you right now. But mine was 444 and I just dissolved it into some water and I fertilize my plants once a week. Obviously you could just buy a liquid fertilizer and give it to your plants at a diluted ratio, but I didn't want to buy liquid fertilizer since I already had granular fertilizer that I owned already in huge quantities. I'm trying not to spend a lot of money here. So I just made my own fertilizer and so far I think it's working pretty well. And that is it for the first video in my joyful growing series. If you like this video and you want to see more on this gardening journey, make sure you subscribe. Maybe you hit the notification button. This process has been so fun for me and I am just in awe of my plants every day. Every day I look at them and I talk to my plants and they're just my little children. I have a lot more videos planned. Like I filmed so much of my process and Right now, as I'm filming this, it's like a few weeks out of when I first started just documenting everything. So there's so much more that I have to show you. So I really hope that you join me on this journey. And I hope that you too are getting your hands all in the dirt and rolling around. As I like to say, my fingers are crossed that eventually in this series, I can show you what I'm harvesting from my garden and what I'm cooking, recipes, like all of this has been 
such a joyous process for me and it's like the one thing that I look forward to doing. I just go to work and I come out here and I just like play around in the dirt for a few hours and then I eat dinner and I wake up and I do the same thing. That's all I'm living for. Anyways, I'm going to stop talking. I hope to see you next time and that's it. Bye.